I'm always a fan of standing up, unfortunately. So I'm going to invite you to stand with us, please, as we uh, sing of our Redeemer. Hymn number 343 are up on the screen. morning we're here to uh, thank you and praise you and worship you for who you are and for the way that you made us we pray your blessing upon our service here this morning we put it into your hands in Jesus name amen and good morning everyone It is so good to see each and every one of you here today and to hear you singing a song about praising our Redeemer. And there's no better song to lead into what we're going to do next than to sing about the redeeming love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So welcome to each and every one of you. It is good to be here, and it is good to be standing here with my good friend, Tony. Tony and I have been doing baptismal studies for, it's been a year now or so, we've been taking our time through things and also doing premarital counseling, because Tony and Shantae are getting ready for a very special day coming up this summer, Uh, but today is a special day too, and so we're thrilled that you can be a part of it, and I am honored that I've been a small part of Tony's journey with the Lord. Tony is not a a stranger to the Lord. He's, He's known Jesus his whole life, but what we're celebrating today is that Tony has decided in this world, in this battle for earth and the great controversy, Tony has chosen a side, and he's chosen Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And what baptism symbolizes, it is not that we say, after this day, I don't need God's grace anymore, but what baptism shows us is that grace is all I have, it's all I need for life, and that's what Tony believes, so that's why we're here today. So, Tony, because you love the Lord Jesus with all your heart, because you believe that when He hung on the cross, He was there for you and your sins, because you want Him 
to be your master, to be your savior. It is my honor and privilege as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ to baptize you now in the name of the Father who loves you, in the name of the Lord Jesus who died for you, and in the name of the Holy Spirit who will live within you. Amen. 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 And I want to, always want to invite anyone out there who is thinking about their walk with the Lord. And if the Lord is encouraging you that this is a step you need to take in baptism, then you let one of the pastors know, you let one of the elders know. We would be honored to be a part of that journey with you. God bless you. Happy Sabbath. You'll notice in your bulletin that the offering today is for Piedmont Park financial needs. And the purpose of the church is to share Jesus and all other things uh, will become unimportant if the human heart doesn't know Jesus. And the Sabbath school lesson this morning was uh, about, uh, about knowing Jesus. So we hope that when supporting our local church that uh, we're sharing the gospel in our own neighborhood I know at our house, the uh, tithes and offerings are our, our largest monthly expenditure, and the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. The world definitely needs Jesus. Uh, Carol and I were over by Chicago this week and uh, meeting a man to pick up something I bought on eBay, and we stayed at a motel in Romeoville, which is just outside of Chicago, and this young man met us there. and. It's a chain of motels we stay in all the time when we travel, uh, but we're not used to having the police come and, uh, and uh, go around and, uh, and then find that the safety lock in our room is broken off and, and the heat goes off in the middle of the night and we're, we were cold and, uh, and the people we saw coming in and out, uh, the world needs Jesus. 
the men that I met there, uh, I talked with for four hours after uh, we did our business, and uh, uh, I, I can say I talked with Jesus for four hours, but really it's pronounced Jesus. But uh, he's such a nice young man, and when I meet people, I, I like to think of them as candidates for the kingdom, and, and I certainly love this young man. I, I can say young because he's at least younger than half my age, and I've, I don't think I've experienced the respect that this young man gave me from young people in a long time. And we talked about everything that both of us knew about Chicago. He was born there. Uh, we got around to the magnificent Egyptian uh, exhibit I'd seen there some years ago. And of course, then we got around to Bible prophecy, uh, naturally. And I, I almost feel like I'd like to buy something else from him so I could go back there again. But uh, by supporting our local church here, we have a chance to reach people like Jesus right here in, in, in Lincoln. Deacons, please stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we have this uh, wonderful church building to meet and worship in, and we realize that this is not universal around the world. We also realize that there are people right across the street and around the block who need to know Jesus, and we pray that uh, by giving uh, to your cause, by returning our tithe and other offerings, that we can further the, the spread of the gospel in our own neighborhood. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
far and wide From oceans deep to mountains high From tiny flowers to lofty trees The warmth of sun and the cool of sea Creation shouts of matchless grace Telling me that it's time to praise With all my heart, my voice I raise Jesus, this song is for you Providing love, hope, and forgiveness Healing sickness, death and disease Feeding the hungry and calming raging seas Your life revealed the love of God Your mighty power, leave me Inspire me to sing this song Jesus, this song is for you Rejected of men, you bore our griefs and shared our sorrows and gave us a second chance at tomorrow. In death, you paid the highest cost, the way of salvation to those who were lost. So I will cling to the old rugged cross Jesus, this song is for you Thank you, Ryan. Uh, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to Piedmont Park Seventh-day Adventist Church this morning. I couldn't leave home this morning without one of my prized British artifacts. Can you guess what that was? My black umbrella. My black umbrella. If you made it through the rain, okay. And good to see each and every one of you here this morning for our worship service this morning and celebration of Tony's baptism. And there's much more to come. Uh, here are the uh, announcements that we have for you. Um, I'm going to start with Vanessa, but if uh, Jason is here, yes, he is, and Linda as well, and Misty Wheeling, I think you have an announcement to make as well this morning, um, if you could come up and be ready for that. Let's kick off with Vanessa first. Do, do, if we liked Ryan, there's more of him later, right? That's exactly right. So I was up here last week and invited you to the concert, and tonight's the night. 
7 o'clock. Let's make a good showing and um, give Ryan a good kickoff as he starts his music ministry. Um, free concert. We will take up an offering to help him get started. And then afterwards, lots of yummy refreshments and buying CDs. So 7 o'clock, doors open at 6, and we hope to see you there. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Vanessa. Did I say if we like Ryan? Take away that. Take away that if. We, we love the boy from Minnesota. Okay, Jason, would you like to give an announcement uh, next? I'm guessing that this is going to be about the uh, church's co-ed softball team. Yeah. I guess I'm uh, taking over managing the church co-ed softball team this year. We play over at College View Academy's uh, softball field. So if anyone is interested, my number's in the bulletin so we can get a team together and play this year. Do you all know what softball is? <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. It's not cricket. Misty, you have, a, you have an announcement to make as well, I think, about an upcoming blood drive. So a few weeks ago, we passed around some clipboards um, to determine if people were interested in possibly donating blood for Nebraska Community Blood Bank. And so now we have the date. The date is May 4, so it's a Monday, and it'll be between 3.30 and 6.30. So next week, I'll have the sign-up sheet. I'll leave it at the, the desk in the back. So our current welcome desk, and uh, we can also pass it during church so that you can sign up and, uh, um, and then donate some blood. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much, Misty. Uh, I understand that all these announcements are also in your bulletin with some others as well, so please uh, study that carefully too. Uh, Linda, you have our final announcement, I think, this morning about a couple who are moving to, of all places, Iowa. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'll make it quick. Um, many of you know Mel and uh, Bev Veets. They sat in the sub school room back here, and Mel always sat at our front door and greeted people and had candy for the children after Sabbath school, and they would race to him every Sabbath to get their candy. Well, they haven't been able to be here for a couple months because he's had some back surgery, and um, they just haven't been able to get here. And I just, they want you to know how much they love this church and have prayed for everybody in this church for years. My kids are older and they remember Candyman. So, but they're moving. I just found out they're moving when I called a few weeks ago and they're moving in May. So I'm gonna send her out a card. If you remember getting candy from Mel, I spent many times with him listening to him. He has written out the Bible by hand. I know more than five times. This man is incredible, and Bev has such a sweetheart. So I'd like to send him off and let him know they're loved and missed. So I'm going to send out some cards to have for you to sign, and if you remember getting candy from him, um, that would be great. They would love it. Okay, thank you very much, Linda. Thank you for all those uh, announcements. Uh, I welcome you. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Um, just to remind you, after the service today, there will be a fellowship meal down in our fellowship hall. And you are very welcome to stay and join for that. Well, at this time, I'm going to ask the um, elders to come forward. I think we're going to have a special time here, a special prayer here for Tony. So those of you in the congregation who are our church elders or uh, maybe other pastors that are here with us today as well, we're going to pray him up. Yes. It's always thrilling to be able to celebrate with someone when they're baptized. And Jesus said that we should do this, that we should be baptized. But John said that one would come after him when John the Baptist was doing his baptisms. He said, one's coming who's going to baptize you with fire. And that was the prediction of the Holy Spirit that would come. And so, Tony, we're celebrating with you today your water baptism, and now the elders have gathered around you because in this church we believe in the ministry of all believers. And we know that the Lord has a ministry for you. He has a gift in you already that He is going to now bring out so that you can be used by Him to help someone else. Before we have that prayer, though, we also want to make this official. Tony asked me, he's like, is today the day I get to become a member of the church? I said, yes, it is. So is there a motion that we accept, Tony? I see a hand there, and I'm going to take that hand there uh, from Mr. Hortz. He voted too. <laughs> And now, uh, Tony, I want you to take a good look. Make sure you check out the balcony as well. All those in favor of Tony becoming a part of our church, amen. Thank you, church. All those opposed, very good, very good. Well, Tony, we want to pray with you now. And so I want to invite you to kneel down right here. And elders, I want you to gather around him as, as best you can. Either put a hand on him 
or put a hand on someone who has a hand on him. And church family, would you bow your heads and pray with us as well? Gracious Heavenly Father, what an amazing God you are. Today, Lord, we celebrate your grace. We celebrate with you, Lord, because you're looking down from heaven at Tony and you're smiling, saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Lord, you've washed him clean. You've promised to empty him out of self, but Lord, don't leave him empty. Now, fill him full, Lord Jesus, of your spirit, of your power, so Tony can go forth from here and to be the man that you want him to be. Lord, bless him with the gifts that you have already in store so that he can be a part of your work. He can be a harvester and help others know their Savior. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving Tony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And elders, if you would take a moment just to congratulate Tony, we want to welcome him uh, into our church. And church family, I want you to, after the service, find this young man and, and give him a handshake, give him a hug, a fist bump, whatever is necessary. Uh, but we're so thrilled, Tony, to have you with us. And we'll be ready for that special day that's coming up here in just a few weeks, a few couple months. I like to say weeks. It seems like it's getting here quicker. <laughs> but you have more to do to get ready. So we'll, we'll be thrilled when that day gets here. God bless you. Before we transition here into our songs of praise, just one further announcement. Apparently, it's going to be a 100% chance of rain this afternoon. So the Piedmont peddlers won't be peddling this afternoon, okay? Thank you. Please stand and sing with us the days of Elijah. Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. He 
These are the days of Deborah, leading the armies of faith. And these are the days of your servant Esther, born for his time such as this. And these are the days of your song of prayer. the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind, who makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flame of fire, you who laid the foundations of the earth, it is to you, O oh God, that we come this morning. We are bowed low, because while we proclaim there is no God like Jehovah, we know in our hearts that we are unworthy to see you. We sing you praises, but we know our hearts are filled with impurity, sin, deceit. Holy God, Righteous, riding on the wind. We need your salvation. We need your son. 
We need your redemption because this world is rocking back and forth with the forces of evil. And we see it every day in the world and we see it in our own lives. And we plead with you, Father. Forgive us. We are sinful. We love you, we praise you, and we adore you, but we need your forgiveness. So please, cover us with your son's righteousness. We praise you for being a powerful God, and, and this morning, as the rain has watered the earth and we have witnessed another baptism by water, we're just thankful that your spirit still moves on this earth. And so we pray that it would continue as it has in this young man's life out into this community and that more would be drawn to you because of your goodness and your righteousness and your salvation. Father, the ministries of this church are many, but they are nothing but human actions if they are not blessed by you. So go, Father, in each one of us, work as a minister of fire through us, imbue us with the power of your Holy Spirit, that we might be a light on a hill for your kingdom, Father. We think of people who are requesting prayer this morning. We think of the Arts family and Telly Lewis who is recovering from surgery, and we pray that you would be in their lives in a special way. May they know that they have been prayed for, and may they know that there is a God in heaven who hears and who acts. This morning as we continue in worship, I pray that your, your spirit would abide yet still in this place, that you would bless our speaker this morning, Pastor Michael, and may the words that he says be filled from on high with your heavenly wisdom. Holy God, cover us. Cover us with your hand and save us all, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sabbath. I know some of you want to follow along maybe in your, on your uh, phones or your tablets. We're going to be going to 1 Peter 4, 7 to 11. And I think it's also up here too. <clears throat> Serving for God's glory. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak of the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as if the, with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom <clears throat> belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Shane, for reading the Lord's Word this morning. And thank you uh, to each person who has helped with our worship. And thank you for worshiping today with us. There is a new phrase that has surfaced in recent years. You've no doubt heard of the phrase, the bucket list before. Have you heard of that? Okay. It's a list of things or activities that a person wants to do or see before they kick the bucket, as the saying goes. So, my friends, have you thought of your bucket list, those things that you want to do in life while you have the ability? Have you thought of that, things you want to do, things you want to see? Take a moment and try to think of that. Maybe there's something you want to write down on your bulletin, just something that you think of you want to do as, as we're sharing. What are some things you want to do in your life? Maybe you want to go to Egypt and, and see the pyramids before the end happens. That would be an amazing thing. Or if pyramids aren't your thing and you like more modern structures, maybe you want to check out the Taj Mahal at sunset. Where are the places that you want to go in life? What are the things you want to do? Does anyone want to go scuba diving down underwater with all the fish. Does that thrill anybody? Or if water is not your thing and you need a bigger thrill, maybe you're just waiting for a plane that will let you fall right out of it. <laughs> what do you want to do for your bucket list? Well, 
I'm not sure. There's so many wonderful things, and you write those down. Write them down, and maybe you can share them later today with, with your friends and family. I don't know what it is you want to do. Maybe before the end comes, you want to be right there, right there in the stadium when the Yankees win the World Series. I don't know what you want to do, folks. Maybe. Write that one down. That's a good one to have. It's good to have a list of goals, of things you want to do in life. Well, last year, my wife Jeanette and I celebrated our 15-year wedding anniversary. And to celebrate, Jeanette wanted to do the one thing that she had been dreaming of her whole life. So what was her dream? What was on her bucket list? No, it was not going to the Bahamas with me on a trip. Although I'm sure probably many of you will write that down, that you want to, before the end, you want to go to the Bahamas with Pastor Michael. Go ahead and write that down on your list. That wasn't what was on her list, although we did do that. Her dream, her number one thing she wanted to experience was she wanted to swim with a dolphin, which is her favorite animal. So while we were in the Bahamas for this trip, and she'd been dreaming of this her whole life. We got tickets to go to this dolphin experience, and she was on cloud nine. She just was barely able to contain herself. Me? Well, I was along for the ride, kind of, because the thought of getting into the water, out of my environment, into their environment with an animal that is really big and can be powerful was a little unnerving to me. Uh, but we went there, and the instructors told us what to do, and then they told us what to avoid and not do, and so we got down in the water. And Jeanette went first, and she was treading water there until the instructor sent the dolphin off to her, and she got her dolphin, and off she went, swimming with the dolphins. Her dream came true. We were swimming with three dolphins that day. And in fact, actually, one of them was actually one of the dolphins from the movie Cocoon that was in that movie. She is now retired and 35 years old and, and there, and so we got to swim with Cocoon. That was her name. So they told us what to do. They said, when the dolphin comes up to you, pet it on its back, and then they'll swim right next to you. So Jeanette finished with her dream, and she got to go to the side, and then it was my turn. So I got in the water and I swam away from the dock the whole time saying, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And pretty soon my dolphin appeared next to me. I started petting her on the side and off we went. And we began to swim. And the instructors had told us beforehand that dolphins are actually a very good judge of character. They, they can tell people, they just, sometimes they sense a bond with somebody. They said they have a very good judge of character, which turned out to in fact be very true. Because as we were swimming, there were three of us out there swimming, so two other guys were swimming with their dolphins, and wouldn't you know it, before long, those two dolphins left those guys because they wanted to come and swim with me. <laughs> Just amazing. They started calling me the dolphin whisperer. And when I was younger, I'd always hoped that, you know, when you get older, maybe you'll have a way with the ladies. I just didn't think it was going to be with lady dolphins. So we scratched that event off of Jeanette's bucket list. But did you know this morning that dolphins can actually teach us something about mission? We're in part two of our sermon series on the mission of the church. And if you missed last week's, you can, of course, watch it online. We've got a YouTube channel, or you can visit our website. But this week, we're going to learn, we're going to see if we can learn a lesson from a dolphin about mission. Some of you may have seen the movie that came out a few years ago called Dolphin Tail. And last week we had talked about God's mission involves us going. That was the first part of our sermon series was going. And so we talked about that. But this week we're going to see what we can learn from a dolphin. And, and in this movie, A Dolphin Tail, this is where, and of course with Jeanette loving dolphins, we of course had to see this movie. Uh, but it's a movie about a dolphin that lost its tail. And so the Clearwater Marine Aquarium down there helped this dolphin use a prosthetic tail. Never been done before. And we had to see that movie, and of course we had to see the sequel when it came out too, and it's a true story. And so we watched the second one as well, Dolphin Tale 2, when it came out. And it's actually the second movie that gave me something that I thought, wait a second, God's call to mission. 
Because in the second movie, the people at the aquarium are talking about their mission statement for why they do what they do. And their mission statement is quite simple. It's just three words. Their mission statement is rescue, rehab, and release. I said that's why they exist. They rescue injured marine animals. And once they have them, they rehab those animals. They help them to strengthen themselves again and to heal. Then lastly, they release them back into the world once healthy. And as I was watching them talk about this, the light bulb just flashed on and I said, that's mission. That's the mission of the church. Rescue, rehab, and release. That's what a church is supposed to do. That is a church's mission. So a church's ministry should fall into one of these categories in order for us to complete our mission. So let's look in the Bible this morning and let's see if, in fact, mission for a church fits with this idea of rescue, rehab, and release. Are we as a church called to rescue? Amen. Amen, we are. At that Clearwater Aquatic Center, they hear about the injured animals, and so they go and they rescue them from the world. Our job as a church is to go, amen, and to rescue injured people from this world. We studied last week about this. Jesus told us in Matthew 28, verse 19, Therefore go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He said, go. Going to rescue others is why we exist as a church, amen? So some of our ministries must fit into this category of rescue, rescuing people from this world. And friends, it involves a lot of ministries. It involves Bible studies, teaching and evangelism, but not just those ministries. It involves the ministries that meet the needs of people. It involves having a worship service. And the worship is more than just when the pastor talks. It's everybody using their skills. It involves the ministries that bring connections. But rescuing always involves an aspect of going, of going to others. Friends, we should not, we cannot, we must not wait for the injured to walk in our doors here. We cannot do that. And that's why we do ministries like Vacation Bible School and we give people a place to come. That's why we do Light Up the Dark in the Fall to reach out to others. That's why we do the Journey to Bethlehem in December as a way to give people a chance to hear the good news. And it's also why this coming September we're going to team up. This church is going to team up with all the other Adventist churches here in Lincoln, and we're going to put on a program called God in Shoes, which is all about going to where the people are, meeting their needs, and getting connected with them. That's coming up in September, and, and you're, you will hear more about that in the future, but it's an amazing ministry where we can go where the people are. God's mission for Piedmont Park is to go and rescue, but that's not all. For the Aquatic Center also has a part of their mission is to not just rescue them, but to rehab them once they have the animal there. They help the animal heal and strengthen. Well, my friends, do people get injured out in this world? Without a doubt. We can't expect to rescue perfectly whole and healthy people. That's not how it works. People have real needs when they connect with a the church. They have emotional needs, financial needs, social needs. And Jesus believed in meeting the needs of people. If you've got your Bibles with you, let's open them up and look at what Jesus did when it came to ministry. So if you've turned with me to Luke chapter 7. Turn there if you've got a turning version of the Bible, and if your version of the Bible is not a turning one but a clicking one, go ahead and click there, and let's look at Luke chapter 7. This was when John the Baptist was concerned, wondering if Jesus was going to be the Messiah or, or was there someone else they were to suspect to come. And so John's disciples come and ask Jesus, and this is his response about whether or not he was the Messiah. Luke chapter 7, verse 22, it says, Jesus answered and said to, the, said to them, go, go and tell John the things you have seen and heard. The blind see, 
the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Jesus' ministry and His mission involved rehab. It involved helping people, meeting their needs. Do our ministries here meet the real-life needs of rehabbing, hurting people? Friends, I believe they do. Now, of course, we don't replace doctors or train counselors, but can we help people here? Amen, we can. Let's go to another section of the Bible. If you turn with me to Titus chapter 3, I'll give you a second to find Titus. Okay, are you there? <laughs> Titus is one of those books in the Bible that hides a little bit. It's right after 2 Timothy. But Titus talks about people's needs. I'll put it up here on the screen for you in case you're still flipping. Uh, but it's a great book. Titus chapter 3, verse 14 says, And let our people also learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs, that they may not be unfruitful. As a church, the Bible calls us to meet the needs of people. The apostle John believed in this as well, and in his first letter he says, by this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. In verse 17, but whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? In verse 13, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. This is why we need ministries that will help people to rehab. That's why we have ministries like our Better Day ministry, which helps people who are hurting financially. This is why so many of you are part of our hospitality and fellowship meal team, to help people connect when they're here. That's why we have the Celebrate Recovery ministry that Jason Williams and Pastor Andy and so many others have worked on these last few months a ministry to help people work through the pains of living in this world. That's why we have the education ministry at College View Academy and here in our Sabbath schools to teach and to train people how to succeed in life and how to live for God. Even now we're planning, we're dreaming about the future and when, uh, when the building is built and what we can do with that and how we can have some Bible reading groups that meet on Wednesday nights and just give people a chance to come together and to talk and to share to connect with God and others. We have our health ministries that's working to help people live healthier lives, and that's why I'm so thrilled that Misty is giving everybody an opportunity to not just give, not just give money at church, but give your blood too. We believe in real giving here at Piedmont. Amen? So thank you for everyone who will come and help with that ministry, and thank you, Misty, for putting that together. We're going to have a new stewardship team that's going to start it's going to work on helping all of us to learn how to be faithful to God in all aspects of our lives and how to have that joyful, abundant life that Jesus spoke about. Folks, sometimes a church, and I'm guilty of this too, sometimes we can focus so much on going and rescuing people that we forget that we're supposed to help them once we catch them. Sometimes we can bring in so many new people, but there's others that are heading out the back door as quickly as we bring in new. That's why part of our mission has to be rehab. It has to be. We have to focus on helping people connect and give them the tools that are needed to live healthy and joyful lives. But the mission of the church is to rescue. It's to rehab, but then one more component there that we learned from the dolphin's tail. The last component is to release. The aquatic center, their job, and they wrestle with this in the second movie, is releasing a healthy dolphin back into the wild. And they weren't sure if they wanted to. So you might say, wait a second now, pastor. Hold on. Are we supposed to release people back into the world? Isn't our job supposed to hold on to people as a church and not let them go? Well, my friends, if we have to hold on to people, then Christ never had them in the first place. Amen? The release part of our mission 
is to complete the circle. Because God does not rescue us and save people so that we can all hunker down inside our four walls and just wait for the second coming to happen. That's not why God saves us. Jesus calls us to be the salt of the world in Matthew 5, verse 13. And salt by itself is kind of nasty, isn't it? Salt is only useful and it's only tasty when it connects with something else. Friends, each of us who have come to know Christ and come to accept Him as our Savior, we were rescued by Christ because someone else at some point in time was used by Jesus in ministry to help us. And then Christ used someone else. He used their other people's ministries to rehab us and to help us. And that process is still going on, amen, for all of us. And finally, Christ says, now it's your turn. It's your turn. It's time for you to go and to rescue. It's time for you to rehab others. That's why we work so hard at this church to train our young people. And you see them as, as a part of ministry. It's why we train our student pastors that we have here and train our young adults. Tony, I'm going to tell you what the pastor told me when I was baptized all those years ago. In the middle of the sermon, he stopped. He said, Michael, it's not over for you. In my head, I said, yeah, it is. I got baptized. I'm done. I just get to sit down now and enjoy. The pastor said, it's not over for you. So I tell you the same thing, Tony. It's not over for you. God has plans for you and for each of us in ministry. Part of our mission is to train and equip members to do ministry in the world. Peter described it this way in 1 John, not in 1 John, in 1 Peter. So if you turn with me there, in our last text for today, 1 Peter, our Scripture reading, 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 10. That's our job to do ministry. So 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10 says, as each one has received a gift. That's each one. It doesn't say, as a few of you have gotten gifts. It says, each one in the church has received a gift. Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak of the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and the dominion forever and ever. The reason we do ministry is not for our glory, but is for God's. As each one has received, use it to help others. That, my friends, is our mission, to rescue, to rehab, and then to release. My friends, I hope you have your bucket list. I hope you have those things in life that you want to do, that you want to experience. I hope someone's car is not getting broken into. <laughs> I hope a lot of things while I'm preaching. But I do hope that we will think about what we can do here in our mission to rescue, to rehab, and to release. But folks, I'd like to encourage all of you, if you've got that list figured out, and maybe for some of you, the bucket list is a long ways away, that's okay. But think about those things you want to do. And if you have, maybe you've got your list of things you want to do, I'd like to encourage all of us to add one more item to our list. One more thing I'd like to encourage you to think about being a part of in your life before the end, could you write down on your list, help someone else know Jesus? Could you do that, my friends? And I invite you to spend some time praying. Listen to Jesus as you think about ministry. For right now, our nominating committee is, is functioning this quarter, and they're working on finding members for our ministries. So they're going to be calling you. Is the Lord calling you to a ministry of rescue, of going out and finding others? Or have you been called to the ministry of rehab, helping others to heal and to connect? Or is God wanting you 
wanting to release you to go back out so that you can connect as salt and continue the circle and rescue someone else. I'm glad, friends, that there's a Clearwater Aquatic Center that works so hard to rescue hurting animals, but it's not just animals that are hurting in this world. It's not just dolphins that are needing rehabbing. It's people too. And I'm honored that our God calls us to mission, to the ministry of rescue, to the ministry of rehab, and to the ministry of release. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, each of us here hear the siren beeping. And Lord, this world, this world has sirens going off all the time. There's emergencies every moment around this world. There are hurting people. And you've called us. You've called us from the world, but not just to sit in a bunker and to just wait for you to get here. Lord, you've called us to mission. You've called us to make a difference in someone else's life like someone once made a difference in ours. So each person here, Lord, in the quietness of this moment, may we each think about what you're calling us to do. Because there's something that we can do for you, Lord, that no one else can do. There's a person out there who will listen just to us. There's a person out there who's just waiting for our ministry to bloom and to grow and mature. So, Lord Jesus, I pray that this church will be a church full of grace, that this church will be a church full of your love, that this church will go forth to rescue, to rehab, and to release until you come again to take us home. Thank you, Lord, for rescuing us. Now we, may we go, and with your help, with your grace and your power, bring someone else to you so they can be rescued too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you stand with us and sing our closing song of dedication?
song means so much to me because it speaks about the poor wanderer, and I was once that poor wanderer needing a home in a tiny little church in Iowa, welcomed in a rock and roll DJ and said, you belong here. There are more wanderers out there, and they're waiting on us. Almighty Father in heaven, you call us to go. You call us to rescue. Then you tell us to rehab, because when they come in, they're a mess like I am. And then, Lord, you tell us to release them, that they may go and bring another to you. None of this, none of this, Lord, can we do without your help. So pour forth your Spirit again. May it rain down upon us. May it fill us full and change us so much, Lord, so that others will know you just from being near us without us maybe even speaking a word. Lord, shine your light through us. Make us salt that we may go and rescue the perishing. In Jesus' name we pray. And all those willing to be a part of God's mission said, Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful Sabbath.